So welcome back again. Uh, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be picking up um, with the linear lights out menu example. Um, in this example uh, there's going to be a number of different activities. Um, in the last video lecture where we started this project we went ahead and made the main menu. Um, so the main menu had some choices for what you could do. We also implemented um, the first of the the three sub-activities. Uh, we implemented the about activity. Uh, pretty simple activity. Um, it was just really a, a text view on the screen, uh, but it was our first uh, first new activity. We also used a theme with it, uh, which made the, uh, the text uh, look really sharp, which was good. Uh, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the second uh, of the activities, or the sub-activities, um, the number of buttons. Um, so it could have any number of buttons. Um, I chose to limit it to three, five, seven, or nine. Um, and what we want to do is we want to be able to click on this, um, have it launch this activity. Um, if it's currently set to seven buttons, I would like for the seven to start off lit. Um, and then when you click on some number, like let's say you click on three, when we come back here, um, I'm going to want to update um, and say play with three buttons. Um, so this one is um, a little bit more complex than about because the, there's a layout to it, right? Um, we're going to continue to learn about different layouts. Um, so last time we used a frame layout for the outermost level. Um, this time we're going to use a relative layout. Relative layouts are pretty neat. Um, and we're going to do this, uh, this communication, so passing uh, data between different activities. The data we're going to pass is just going to be an integer um, that is uh, the number of buttons. Cool. Um, and it'll look good enough in portrait and landscape that we, we'll just kind of make one um, and, and move on with life. So we're going to go through all the different steps um, of creating an activity. Uh, so um, whenever you want to create an activity, um, we're going to make a class, um, a layout file, uh, we're going to include any resources that we need, register it with the manifest, um, and then call the intent. Cool. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so um, we're going to have to worry about passing, I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, for this one, we're going to need a couple additional string resources, um, so we'll just go ahead and do these up front. Uh, these are pretty simple. Um, for, our, for our radio buttons, uh, we're going to have a label that says 3, 5, 7, or 9. Uh, so let's just go ahead and add these to our string resources. Cool. And next we need to go ahead and make this new class. Um, so we're going to call this class uh, change num buttons, and it's going to have a um, super class of an activity. If you ever forget, by the way, to, to make um, the super class setting, um, it's really not hard to type the words extend space activity. Um, so don't ever worry if you forget, uh, forget to do it. So change num buttons but it's here and it's a feature, so I'll do it. Great, so it's gonna extend android.app.activity. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna need to do inside here is we're going to have to override on create. Um, the fastest way to do it is probably just to grab somebody else's on create. So I just went ahead and snagged it from uh, the about box. The only thing you're going to need to do is we're going to need to use a different XML file. Um, the XML file we're going to use, uh, we're going to have to make, uh, we'll use one called change num buttons. Uh, it says I have no idea what change num buttons is, and I say that makes a lot of sense because we haven't made it yet. So let's go make it. Um, so if you click on layout um, and hit file new, um, or you can get good and you can use your hotkeys, so Option, Command, N for the Mac, um, XML file. Um, I'm going to make a change num buttons dot XML. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make its uh, root node be a relative layout. 
So relative layout we have not used yet in the class. Um, it's probably one of one of the more useful layouts. Um, the nice thing about it is you can um, make something be like to the left of something else or to the right of something else or above it. We're not going to use it thoroughly in this example, um, but we'll at least kind of show you a little bit about relative layout. So we go ahead and make this. I'm going to change it to uh, 3.2. Um, and you can see that it went ahead and it gave us a uh, relative layout, which was great. What we're going to do with this relative layout is we're going to put um, some buttons that are going to be centered in the middle. Um, and then we're going to have some text which is going to be above those buttons. So this group is going to be centered um, and then this text will be above it. Great, so let's go ahead and get that, uh, get that setup done. So a radio group. Um, and then radio buttons inside it. You pretty much always want to use a radio group because um, it does the, the work for you to make sure that only one is selected, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, it also, by default, behaves as a, um, a linear layout uh, when you're putting things together, which is kind of nice. Um, you'll notice here that the text view is actually above it, um, but over on the left here, it actually comes after it in the order. With relative layouts, the order is important because we're going to make this one be above this one. So we've got to place this one um, and then uh, we'll do this one. Oh, I missed my plus minus and my up and down arrows. How sad. Cool. So let's go ahead and add um, a radio group. So I'm going to go ahead and drag over the radio group. Um, it wants me to put it somewhere. It wants me to like align it to someone. Um, which I kind of find annoying, to be honest. So I'll align it to the top, even though I want to center it. Um, so I aligned it to the top, which I'm going to have to change that. Um, so you can see that with a relative layout, you have a lot more uh, layout parameters. So you've got, you know, the regular parameters for what, you know, whatever this this object is, and then the layout parameters. Um, change based on what it's inside of. So since it's inside of a relative layout, it's got all kinds of things. So I don't want um, a line with top. What I actually want is I want it to be centered in the parent. Um, so we're center and parent. Center and parent, true. Um, so it's going to be centered in the parent. Uh, then what I'm going to want in there is I'm going to want a bunch of radio buttons. See if I can drop those in on top of it. Maybe, uh, fine, I'll drop them um, on the bottom of the view and then I'll fix them in XML. Grr. Uh, so all I wanna do is I just want this button uh, to be inside of the radio group. Great. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and do some other layout things here while we're going. Uh, so the first thing I notice is that my background is still black. Uh, I can't have that. Um, so let's go and let's change the uh, background uh, to use our same background color. It'll make our app kind of feel consistent. Great. Um, and of course, uh, the radio button, uh, we want a different uh, text on it. Um, so let's see here, where's the uh, text? Oops, I'm on the group. Uh, the radio button, uh, it's text. We're going to change it to be uh, radio 3. Um, and since I'm going to copy paste this, I'm also going to get the ID approximately right. Um, if you want to follow along with what the slides have, the IDs are just going to be called radio 3, 5, 7, 9. Um, and then the text on them should be, should be fairly obvious. So let's go ahead and make those things happen. So the ID on this one is just going to be called radio underscore three. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste that um, in text. So I'll grab that guy, control C, control V, control V, control V, control A, control I. Um, and then I'm just going to change it from uh, the next one will be five, 
and then seven, and then nine. Great, and let's go see how we're looking so far. Um, looks like we've got four uh, sharp looking radio buttons. That's great. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to um, uh, actually officially in the in the slides it said instead of be calling radio group one which was the default name um, in the slides I said it would just be called radio group so go ahead and save that next thing we want to do is we want to add a text view um, so if we add a text view you can drag and drop a text view um, sometimes with uh, with this 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 neato little box that shows up um, to, but it's not showing up here. Um, so this text view, I really just wanted to put above this. Um, I'll just set it right here and I'll just see what it does to me. Um, I put it inside of it. That was not what I wanted. I move it outside of it. Nope. Hate the new system. Control A, Control I. This text view, I want to be outside of the radio group. Uh, this text view I don't need to refer to anywhere, so I can actually just delete the uh, the ID on it. Oops, um, I deleted the, the text. Um, now let's just go play around with the properties. Here's the ID. I don't really need that, so I can blow him away. Um, you can see that it defaulted to the upper left-hand corner. That is obviously not where it's going to end up. The text on it is going to say uh, change number of buttons. And what we're going to want it um, laid out, we're going to want it laid out um, below, or sorry, above um, the radio group. So for layout above, I'm going to say lay it out above uh, the radio group. So it's kind of neat how you can set things above. Um, so that set it above, which was great. Another thing we, we can choose to do is we can. Um, center it horizontally so we can set that to true um, and then that'll center it horizontally we could have also made it fill the width um, so match the parent um, and then done the gravity but this will work just fine and then let's go ahead and make the uh, the font a little bigger uh, so the text size let's just go ahead and crank it up to like i don't know 26 nope too big 22 uh, good enough. Um, so I think that that looks uh, that looks acceptable. Um, you can move things around a little more if you'd like. So we've done uh, we've done the first couple of steps. Uh, we've got our resources ready. Uh, we've got our layout file ready. Uh, so that's good. The other things we need to do is we need to register it uh, with the manifest. Uh, so this is just like we did last time. So let's go ahead and do that. Ooh, um, a problem has occurred. Um, I'm going to restart my clips real quick uh, just because that one doesn't like to go away. Great, so um, in my manifest, um, I'm going to add a new activity. I'm going to copy um, an old activity just because I'm lazy. Um, and I'm going to edit it. So this activity is going to be dot uh, change num buttons. So the system is you say dot and then you say whatever the class name is um, of the activity you're starting. Uh, the string that we're going to use, um, I think it's just called change number of buttons. So change number of buttons. Um, and this one we are not going to give the theme dialog, so I'm going to take that off. Um, and then just to kind of uh, reiterate something we did last time, if I were to grab that intent filter um, and put it inside this activity um, and then run it, um, it would run and it would show me um, the change number of buttons activity. Um, see if it looks good enough on a rotate. Uh, I'm going to call that good enough. Um, so good enough on a rotate, not going to make a special landscape one. One thing you can see that you actually get for free is the, the radio group is already doing its thing. Um, if you check a button uh, that's in the radio group, it goes through and it'll uncheck all the others, which is kind of nice. 
Um, now let's go ahead, and that was just a quick little test. Let's go ahead and move our intent filter back. So control X from here. I'll put it back on the main menu. Um, and now let's go ahead and launch this um, from the main menu. So if I open up my main menu, um, I find the callback for the, um, the change number of buttons. So when somebody clicks this, I'm going to start off. I'm going to do the exact same thing we did before. So we have a change buttons intent. And it's going to be a new intent. Um, and we're going to pass it a context um, of this. Um, and then a class of uh, change num buttons dot class. Great, so there we made our intent. Um, we're going to make some changes to this later, uh, but for now let's just do the exact same thing we did last time, um, which is just to go ahead and start uh, the activity. Um, and just kind of make sure that, that things are, are working when we click the button. So we put it back to start with the main menu, which is great. Um, and if we click on change number of buttons, um, it'll bring us to this new activity. Cool. So we can go back and forth between the two. Uh, we can go back and forth to our about, uh, which kind of has this neat theme. We can change things in here, um, but they don't, they don't call anything. Um, and we're starting to do good. You can hit X hit and it'll leave. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and start uh, adding some more things to change number of buttons. Um, as we've done many, many times, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add uh, on-click listeners. Um, so we're going to do, uh, do this yet again. Um, we're going to go through and we're going to grab each of those buttons, or those radio buttons. So they're called radio... Uh, three five seven nine. Um, I've got uh, the XML that I used um, in the slides. If you ever want to reference it, um, the important things that are with uh, relative layouts uh, highlighted. Um, the activity um, adding to the manifest. Um, the intent, which is what we just typed. Um, and now we're going to start uh, modifying um, and listening to these radio buttons. Um, so just like before, you can um, capture them. I went ahead and showed kind of the more formal approach here and then add a listener to it. Um, or you can kind of, you know, you can cheat a little bit and do it all in, in one line. So radio button, uh, find view by ID, r.id.radio. Uh, we'll do three first. I'll say set on click listener. Um, oops. Uh, ooh, uh, maybe I should be using the on checked change listener. Um, and that might be even better. So what were my options here? Um, I know that on click works, um, but why not? I should probably learn something. Uh, register a callback that should be invoked uh, when the check state of this button changes. I'll, I'll test. In the slides it says on click, I know that that works. Um, but for this, I'll go ahead and try this on um, check change listener. So it should change state whenever it gets checked, or I guess, ooh, it might change when it gets unchecked. All right, we'll try it, and then we'll, we'll, we'll change it if I need to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let the superclass implement the uh, set on check change listener. And Android or Eclipse crashed. That's great. Let me pause it and I'll get it restarted. From my crash, um, it looks like um, during my crash I lost what I typed so far. Um, and hey, guess what? I'm not going to use the. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to use the set on click listener this time. ID dot radio button. Hopefully, all my other files were saved. Um, and this time, I'm going to set the uh, the on click listener to this. Um, and then I'm going to have this guy uh, get fixed by just letting the uh, change number of buttons implement it. Uh, and then I'm going to add the unimplemented methods. There are different ways to do this, um, but 
Um, this one, this one makes sense in this situation. Um, so I could have made. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it. I could have made anonymous inner classes, um, or I could have made a, a member variable that was a that was an on-click listener. Um, but I kind of just letting let the activity implement it. Um, so same thing we've done so many times. Um, we'll go ahead and switch uh, based on the views, uh, get uh, ID, and then we'll just have a case uh, for everybody. Kind of feel a little bad doing such a similar task over and over again when there are different ways to do it, but um, you kind of get in a rut of the ones you like. I'm going to go ahead and use the um, the LLOM uh, from the main menu. Um, I'll just go ahead and make it uh, public. Just so I don't have to type it again. Um, so to just use that same tag. Um, and then um, I'll just say in here, I don't know, radio 3. So a little bit at a time. Uh, we'll go ahead and do the, the same kind of test that we start with um, oh so often, which is just print out a little log message. So before you do anything complex, um, you make sure that you don't do anything too stupid. Um, and you make sure that it will actually print uh, your little log messages as you click around. So let's go ahead and filter by LLOM, clear it off. Um, so now whenever you say change number of buttons, we say three, nine, five, seven. Cool. So my buttons are working. Uh, life is good. One thing that I would like to change um, is I would like for whenever I click on this button, so right now the default is, or I've currently got it set to seven buttons. Whenever I click on change number of buttons, I would like for the seven um, to already be highlighted. Um, or whatever I pass in. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our first um, our first little bit of actually passing one thing um, into another. So we've got it set up. We've got our listeners. Um, we want it to. We want to be able to pass information to it to start with the current selection, and then we also eventually want to be able to pass information back. So we want to be able to return that value back. So the one we're going to do first. Um, is the passing information in. The way you go about passing information in, um, first off, these are these two activities are in the same application, so they could do a thing called using the same shared preference. Um, we're not going to do that, uh, just because I want to show you about passing data with intents. Um, there are a few ways you can do it. The easiest way is to use key value coding. So an intent can store stuff in it, um, where it's just a key and a value. So what we're going to do on this end is we're going to, on this intent, we're going to put in an extra piece of information. We're going to use this key, um, and we're going to put in, like, say, the number 7. Um, and it's going to start this activity. And then in this activities on create method, uh, we're going to get the intent, um, and then we're going to get the um, an int value from that extra, so we're going to get an integer extra. You can get all kinds of extras. Um, this one we're passing a number, so we're going to be passing an int extra. So let's go ahead and see some of this in action. So what we need to do is in the main menu, um, we are going to um, add uh, the number of buttons uh, currently uh, to the intent. Um, so we're going to have to make um, a new member variable. So we'll have a private int m num buttons. Um, also, whenever we uh, put it in, we need a key. Um, so we're saying we need a key. Call it whatever you like. I'm going to call mine key underscore num buttons. So private uh, static final um, string uh, key num buttons. Uh, 
Actually, since the other end will need to uh, know about the same key instead of making it private, I'm going to go ahead and make it public. Um, and they're in the same package as me, so they'll be able to, to use it just fine. Cool. So we're going to be passing in a number of buttons. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give uh, the number of buttons a default of 7 for now. Um, we're going to change this in a little bit just to play with it. Um, and so right now it's got a default of 7. Um, and then we're going to pass it in um, using the intent. So we're going to say change button intent, uh, put extra. Um, and you can see that there are a couple things that you can put in. Um, you always, the key should be a string. Uh, you can put in booleans, uh, bytes, chars, doubles, floats, um, ints. Um, so you can do all these things. You don't have to click on int, but I'm going to. Um, and the name we're going to put in is we're going to put in key num buttons. Um, and the value that we're going to put in is the m num buttons. So this should pass over 7 in this case. So put extra on this end. Um, and then on the other end, we're going to need to use the, the get int extra. So let's go do the other end. Uh, so on the other end, uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get the intent. Um, and then we're going to get uh, the num buttons. So to get the intent, so the past intent, um, you could call this dot get intent. Um, and so you can get the intent that was passed um, to like make you be here. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and say uh, past num buttons. Uh, this is equal to the past integer past intent dot um, get. You can see there's a bunch of them. We're going to get the int extra. So it's going to pull out an int. Um, Oh, where's it at? Had trouble finding it for a second there. Uh, get int extra. Um, and so it receives a string um, for um, the key. So the main menu dot, um, we had a key called get nu key num buttons. And then this I think is clever. Um, if it doesn't exist, don't crash. Um, just, just give me some default value. Um, you can choose to do a lot of different things on the default value here. Um, I think what makes the most sense here is actually to make the default be negative 1. Um, if you wanted to be a little safer, you can make the default be 7. Uh, doesn't really matter. Um, and then let's go ahead and print out a little log message uh, using the uh, same tag we've been using, LLOM. Um, and we're going to say passed in num buttons uh, equals uh, past num buttons. Cool. Um, so now we can see if this actually gets passed in um, 7, because it should get passed in 7 if everything was working right. So let's give ourselves a little room in the log. Um, and if I click on this, um, you can see it passes in 7. Um, and I mean, if you you know need to test it, you could pass in whatever you wanted. So you could pass in a, a ludicrous number. Um, so seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven buttons. Um, don't try to fill the screen with that. Um, and then you can click on these things, um, and it's all well and good. So we passed it over. That was phase one. Um, but if I pass over seven, the goal is. Um, I want it to make that, um, I want it to start off with that seven button checked. Uh, that is not happening yet. Um, they, they, no visual indication. So we're going to fix that um, is the next thing we're going to do. Cool. So we've got it, which is good. So now we want to use uh, the past num buttons to set uh, the correct radio button start with. So this is going to be how we're going to start. I can catch up the slides a little as well. 
Um, so we passed over the num buttons, uh, we dug it out, um, and now we're going to use it um, to set the right uh, button. So we're going to grab the radio group, um, we're going to see who got passed in, um, and then we're going to check uh, the right the right button. So our radio group. So this is our button group. Equal to radio group. Uh, find view by ID. R dot ID dot. I think I called it radio group. Uh, control shift O to get rid of our red lines. And then we're going to do a switch. Seems like I use a lot of switches. Uh, a switch based on the pass num buttons. Um, if it was three, what I would like for you to do is I'd like you to take that button group um, and I'd like for you to check um, r.id.radio3. And if it was nine, check number nine. If it was seven, check number seven. Um, and if it was five, check number five. Cool. Um, and if it was not any of these, um, if it was none of them, um, then just let it fall through um, and let none of them be selected. So let's go ahead and run it. Um, and now when we pass over seven, uh, that seven button should be selected. So whenever I hit it, um, presto, um, I passed over information um, and it kept it. Um, if you pass over a ridiculous value, um, it just won't select any of them. So I just kind of passed over a garbage number. Uh, it doesn't select any. And if you pass over, let's say you passed over nine, um, now when I click it, it should hopefully have the 9 button be selected. Cool. Um, so it feels like a small thing to kind of start with having the one you were previously unselected, uh, but it's something you, you, know, you should do in an app. Um, and it represents you know, one of the major learning objectives um, of this app, uh, which is passing data with intents. So we've actually done the easier one first. Um, so whenever you start up a new activity, you can pass you can pass things to it pretty pretty easily using the put extra um, and then the get int extra. Uh, passing it back is a little bit more complex. So let's go ahead and look at an overview of what that looks like. So in order to pass information back, what's going to need to happen is when we click on one of these buttons, um, first off it's going to have to finish uh, that app. So just like we had the exit button finish, um, finish the one activity, uh, we're going to have to click on it and we're going to have to finish it um, and it's going to have to give information back. Anytime you want to give information back, instead of, instead of starting that activity with just start activity, you have to call start activity for result. Um, and by saying for result um, means that once it's done, it's going to call um, on activity result. So if you, if you call it with this, um, then you get notified when it finishes. You also have the ability to pass an intent uh, back, uh, which is nice. Um, so we're going to have an intent. Um, so on this side, we're going to put in an extra over here. Um, and then on the other side, uh, we're going to get the int extra out over here. So the int uh, intent stuff is, is you should be comfortable with. Um, you're actually making a bundle, uh, but it, um, you, we're going to make an intent. Additionally, um, when you start it, um, you give it a request code, um, and then when it finishes, um, it gives you that same request code back. This can be nice because you know if you could if you start multiple activities um, and they all give you information back, you can know who just gave you information. So we're going to give it a request code, um, and then it'll tell us the request code back. There is also, in addition to the request code. Uh, there is the result code. Um, these are different. Uh, request code is what you passed in here. The result code was whether it was success or failure. Um, 
one of the big reasons you'll get failures if somebody clicks on this this button um, and they say, oh, I didn't mean to hit that, and they hit the back button on the device, um, that'll actually respond with, with a failure because failure is the default. Um, whereas, you know, if you choose to send it back, you can put in um, that it was success um, or okay. So let's go ahead and make some of these things happen. We're going to add a request code first, um, and we're going to switch it to start activity for result next. So step one, let's go ahead and make that request code. Um, it can be a private, static, final. Uh, request codes are just integers. Um, so this is our uh, change. I'll say request code. Code for change num buttons. If you have a lot of different activities that you're starting, you know, you have to make sure you're organized. Um, this is the only one we're going to have uh, that has a request code. Um, so I'm just going to say its value is number one. Um, could be anything you wanted. I suppose I should have done zero, but I'll do one. Great. Um, and so what I want to do down here is I want to switch it to start activity uh, for result. Um, and so um, it's asking me for an intent and a request code, and then I've got my old intent here. So I'm going to go ahead and paste, just because it's on my clipboard, uh, this one first. Uh, and then my intent, I'm going to drag from there, and then get rid of this extra junk. Cool. Um, so not, not much changed. Um, just instead of start activity, start activity for result. Um, same intent as before. And we went ahead and we gave it a request code. Now the function that it's going to need to, the function that it'll call uh, when it's done, is on activity result. Uh, we're going to complete that function here in a little bit, but let's just go and add the stub now while we're over here. So on activity result. Great. Um, so on activity result. Um, you can see it gets passed in the result, um, the request code. So it's going to pass us this right back. It's also going to pass us in whether it was success or failure. Um, and then it's going to pass us back that intent as well. Um, so to start with over here, um, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll add some little, some boilerplate code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a switch. Man, all these switches. Uh, based on what request code it was. Um, if it was um, our buddy change request code, our request code, can't talk, our request code change num buttons, um, then we'll uh, print out a little log message uh, that says uh, LLOM um, change buttons is done. Great. Um, so that's kind of what we'll uh, what we'll do to get started. Um, so I believe if we run it now, whenever it comes back, uh, we should have done enough um, that it'll actually call this. So if I call it, uh, the only way I can get out of it now is I hit the back button. Um, but you can see that it actually calls this method now because it says change buttons is done. Um, so you can see that it actually called this method. Um, <clears throat> if it, um, oh, and another thing you can do is you can um, also you can see whether it was successful or not. Um, so we'll say if um, the result code is equal to uh, activity dot, um, I think it's result, your options are result okay, um, result first user, which I have no idea what that is, um, or result canceled. Um, you can also make your own. So I'm going to say if it's result okay, then I'm going to print out um, change buttons finished successfully. Um, if it was not result okay, um, it was, you know, something was not finished successfully, um, 
it, it usually means um, that the user hit back button or activity canceled for some other reason, right? Or activity canceled. Um, so at present, the only way to get back is to hit the back button. Um, so the result should not be okay. Um, so it should say that the user hit the back button. So I go into it. Um, there's no way to leave it yet. Um, but when I hit back, um, it'll say user hit back or activity canceled. Cool. So we're just kind of getting some stubs ready uh, for on activity results. My guess is that a lot of your on activity results will kind of have this style um, where you see who the request code was and then whether it was successful or not uh, determines what you do. So let's go write some code on the other end. Um, so they need to do something to make it result okay. Um, and then they need to do something to make an intent. So let's go look at the other end. Um, and what we want to do on the other side is when somebody clicks on a button, um, we want to, in this area, after they click on a button, we ultimately want to say that we're finished, right? Um, and that will, that will kill the app, or kill the activity. Before we do that, though, um, we want to do a thing called set the result. Um, and so by setting the result, um, you can pass in the result code of OK, um, or you can also pass in an intent with it. Um, so we're going to pass back uh, that it was result OK. So that's activity dot uh, result OK. Um, and then the um, data is really an intent. So I'm going to say intent. Um, so my data returned intent. So I'm just going to say new intent. Um, and I'm not going to like set up a this or anything. I'm just going to call um, the default constructor, which is blank, which I think should work just fine. Um, and so I'm going to pass back uh, this intent. Cool. And so now when I click on a button, um, it'll say finished. Um, it'll, it'll leave. Uh, and it should return result OK. So let's give it a whirl. Um, and we're seeing if it uh, transitions into saying uh, result OK. Oh, and also that it leaves when you hit a button now. So I say change number of buttons. Um, and so uh, we apparently got passed in nine. Um, I'm going to change that back to seven. Uh, whenever I click on the button three, um, it should exit this activity. Um, and it did. Um, and it printed out change, buttons, finished successfully. A font's surely too small for you to read, um, but it worked. Cool. Um, so we were able to pass uh, back things successfully. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to pass back. Um, so we want to put in the extra based on what we were passed. Also, before I forget, I'm going to change the default back to 7. Um, so um, we've got a little area here. Uh, so we're going to say the data returns uh, put extra. Um, and we're going to go ahead and pass in an int. Um, the key that we're going to use, we're going to use the main menus uh, key num buttons. And the value that we're going to pass here is 3. We'll go ahead and copy this into the different areas. Uh, so 3, 5, 7, or 9. Um, so now we're passing back the number. Let's go over to the main menu um, and let's print out that number. So log.dllom uh, passed the value. Um, and what we want to do is we want to get the value that was passed. So I'm going to say pass back num buttons. Um, it is the um, 
intent that was passed to us. So it was the data dot get int extra. Um, so it so whatever was passed on the key num buttons. If for some reason we didn't get anything uh, here, we're, here I will make the default seven because I don't want to set it to negative one. I'll just make it seven. If if somehow it's not there, make it seven. It'll be there. So pass back num buttons. So we're just going to print it out. Um, so it should pass back three, five, seven, or nine. Run it. Oops. Get everything situated here. Um, so if I say change number of buttons, um, it starts off at seven. If I click the three, um, it'll say pass the value three. If then I say five, pass the value, there's a little five there. Uh, nine, uh, may as well check them all. Um, seven. Cool. Um, and if you were to um, hit the back button, um, it would just not change anything. So it'd say user hit back and it would just leave it at what it was. Great. Um, so the only thing that we need to change um, is it'd be nice to change this little seven right here um, to whatever value is passed back. So if you say three, um, it should change that to a three. Um, oh, the about button, I actually hit about. Uh, if you say nine, it should make a little nine right there. Um, so that's our last little goal for today's uh, video, or for this video, is we want to update uh, the play button's um, text. Um, so what we're going to do is we've got a string resource um, called play format. Um, so we're going to get this resource um, and we're going to put that value um, into here. Oh, also I realized that instead of putting it into this little fake variable, um, we've got a member variable for this uh, called numbuttons, which I should be using that. Cool. So it'll store it into the member variable, which is better. Uh, so if we want to get access to that string resource, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, I'll just kind of go ahead and do it the, the more formal approach. So we're going to get a uh, copy of the resources. Um, and then the string, um, so new title, is going to be resource.getString uh, r.id, sorry, r.string. Uh, what was it called? Play format. Um, and then one neat thing is you can actually, that percent %d, you can go ahead and put that in uh, when you get the resource back, uh, which is kind of neat. So that's going to be our new string. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the uh, play buttons, uh, set text. Um, and so we're going to, I mean, there's a couple of them here. doesn't matter which one you pick. Uh, so we're not actually setting it a res ID. We're setting it to the new title. Cool. Um, so we're taking what's passed back. We're storing it. Um, and then we're also using it um, to update that uh, that string value. Um, so if this works, uh, we should be all set for today. Uh, we don't need the log because it should show up right there here in a second. Uh, change number of buttons, three. Sweet. Change number of buttons, five. Excellent. Nine. Great. Seven. Um, if you come into here, um, and you hit back, it'll just kind of stay at seven. Another thing we should probably do, um, just while we've got this handy, um, is when the app starts, uh, we should probably set it there as well. Um, since it's only in two places, uh, really I should make a sub function um, called update play button. Oh, what the heck, I will. Update uh, play button text. Um, I'll use Eclipse to make it for me though. Um, so it'll create it. I'm just going to cut this out of here, paste it in there. Um, and the only reason I'm doing this is later we'll add some persistence. Um, 
and we want to update that text when the app starts as well. So at the end of onCreate, we'll go ahead and call update the play button text. So let's say it was starting with a value of 3, and you run it. Um, you want it to pop up, and you want it to, to say the right number from the get-go. So it starts with 3, um, 3 selected here, press 7, presto. At present, there is no persistence, so if you go back and come back, or if you rotate, um, you can see it goes back because we we have not done um, we have not done any persistence yet. So if I rotate, um, it will lose the value on us. Great. So there's still plenty more to do, uh, but we learned a lot this time about passing um, data to the activity, um, and then how you pass activity back. Um, you create an intent. You say that the result was okay. Then on the on activity result, you filter by the request code, um, and then you look at the result code, um, and then you can get information through the intent uh, that comes back. A lot of good, a lot of, lot of useful stuff. Um, again, I'll, I'll just kind of be, be honest and say you could have done this because shared, act, shared preferences, um, you don't have to pass things back and forth, uh, but it's good for you to learn about, and, and it's probably the better way to do it anyway. Uh, so here you can see I set it uh, much more efficiently. Uh, you can do this whole thing in one line even, you know, play button dot set text, parenthesis, get resources, dot get string. Um, so I could have done that in one line just fine. Um, so at this point we've done um, three of the four activities, uh, which is great. Um, we've done the uh, about, which was simple. Uh, we've done the radio buttons, uh, which was a little more complex because it was sharing um, the last one that we've got to do is the actual game itself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here uh, just to kind of keep things uh, a little bit organized and a little bit shorter. Um, and we'll start the, uh, the next activity in the next video lecture. Um, one of the things I'll mention is it's going to need to know how many buttons there are. Um, so we're going to be passing some data uh, to this last activity. Um, and that'll, that'll build on what we've learned here. Cool. So hopefully you've uh, got a lot better act idea about activities and intents. Uh, we'll see you next time uh, where we make the actual game uh, for this app. See you then.